Hello, this is the TradeSite Forex Market Preview and International Economic Data Roadmap for the week beginning Sunday, the 26th of August, 2018, and ending Friday the 31st, ending the what is usually the most boring month of the year for Forex trading in particular, and it has been for sure. It's always the month that everybody takes off, so the big players are gone and we don't get a lot of range. Here's the ES, I'm sorry, here's the dollar index daily chart, and we've just pulled back a bit this week, but overall, Four days were just dead flat. One day was down. There's not a lot of opportunity to make money in the markets, and that's how the world works. We don't try to force anything that's not there. So let's look at the major pairs, and then we'll look at the intra-week action, and then we'll look at the uh, economic calendar going forward for the week ahead. So the euro dollar is the inverse of the dollar index. Rallied a bit. It always is anymore. The pound was even more narrowly contained. Didn't do much. Look, four of those days were inside of one. It's pretty horrible. Aussie dollar got a 13 buy signal over a week ago and it bounced, but it still is in a very confined range for that. Euro yen got a bigger bounce. Pound yen, uh, not much there. Let's look at the intra week action. These are 30 minute candles. So the euro dollar high to low for the week, uh, basically 220 pips, 25 pips, not a big deal. And most of the move was Monday and Tuesday, and then the rest of the week was dead on the pound dollar. Uh, range from high to low for the week is 210 pips. By the way, this is better than the week before, which was bad. And uh, we made some money here overall, but it's still not very interesting action. Aussie dollar range for the week is 140 pips. I'm not going to go through the rest of the pairs. At the end of the day, this is summer doldrums, and we're just half size because of it. And we go from there. Here's a look at the economic data coming out this week. Sunday, there's nothing. UK goes on bank holiday to start the week. There's one number out of Germany on Monday. So we're already in Tuesday from there. Uh, we got Bank of Japan, of course, CPI, M3 money supply, and private loans out of Europe. Uh, trade balance, but that's the goods trade balance here in the U.S. on Tuesday. Preliminary wholesale inventories, S&P, housing price index, CB uh, consumer confidence here, and Richmond manufacturing index. We've got uh, Australia's got their HIA new home sales number. Then we're already into Wednesday, so we haven't even done anything yet. Uh, consumer confidence. Europe's got uh, the German, German GFK consumer climate number, French consumer spending and preliminary GDP out of France, uh, Credit Suisse economic expectations out of Switzerland, current account out of Canada, preliminary GDP out of the U.S. So this is the second look at GDP for the second quarter. The advanced number last month was the bigger number. This can matter a little bit, but not that much. Pending home sales here in the U.S. at 10 a.m. on Wednesday. Crude oil inventories, building consents out of New Zealand. Japan's got their retail sales number. New Zealand's got their business confidence number Wednesday night. Now we're already into Thursday. German import prices and CPI, Spanish flash CPI number, uh, German unemployment change, M4 money supply out of the UK and mortgage approvals out of the UK. Italian 10-year bond auction. Canada's got their GDP number at 8.30 Thursday morning, Eastern time. We've got the core PCE price index here in the U.S. along with personal income and spending and the weekly initial and continuing jobless claims numbers. Natty Gas here in the U.S. at 10.30 an hour into the markets. Um, consumer confidence out of the U.K. Tokyo core CPI and unemployment rate and industrial production. That's all Japan's numbers. Manufacturing PMI out of China. Housing starts out of Japan going into Friday. German retail sales and the U.K.'s housing price index. French preliminary CPI, Italian monthly unemployment rate. We've got the CPI number out of the broad European sector, uh, the unemployment rate out of the broad European sector. Both of those are 5 a.m. on Friday. While we won't go lower size just because of those, we're already half size because it's summer. Uh, that's a lot of big numbers coming out at 5 a.m. on Friday. Eastern time. Canada has the IPPI and RPPI at 8.30, Chicago PMI at, four, at uh, 9.45, and revised University of Michigan sentiment at 10 a.m. So that's the week ahead for Forex. Not the most exciting week. Again, let's wrap it up and get into Labor Day. The following weekend is a three-day weekend. There will be no calls Sunday night going into Monday for the Labor Day holiday. Somewhere after that, the ranges will typically start to pick up and we will expand our calls and we will talk about uh, raising size, as you know, if you've taken the course, which you should have. And that's it. Charge as usual brought to you by eSignal. If you've not yet taken a trial of our services, feel free to do so. We will help you out for a couple weeks. Have a great trading week in Forex.